Okay, hi. Welcome to the Copium Clinic. Is it Zach? I'm getting tired of these dick eaters, and I, I'll tell you how it happens. It's grooming. The exclusivity is artificial. They could give it to every single individual in the entire fucking game. But I fucking hate when people go and they say that this is a good value for your fucking money. No, it's not. We're gonna need some Haldol. Asmin Gold reacted to part of the most recent Ash's livestream. His focus was on the pricing of Alpha 2. I'm not gonna react to the whole video because I don't wanna waste your time. I wanna get to his main points and then shed some light on things that he either may not know or chooses to ignore. So let's get surgical. First, background. Ashes of Creation was kickstarted in 2017. You could buy different packages, which granted you access to different phases of testing. Ashes is having four main sections of testing, Alpha 1 and Alpha 2, then Beta 1 and Beta 2. The price eventually became $500 to test Alpha 1 and every subsequent phase. In that purchase, you were getting game subscription time, cosmetics, in-game cosmetic shop money, and access to essentially every testing phase. Alpha 1 came and went, and they dropped the price of testing for Alpha 2 and the Betas to $250. This also included game sub time and cosmetic stuff. The sale of these packs closed, and Intrepid said they might reopen sale of Alpha 2 access again sometime in the future. We found out that on Friday, these will cost $120 just for access to testing. There aren't any add-ons with these purchases, Purchases. It's only access to testing. Asmongold reacted to this. His main point with the monetization of Ash's testing is here. There's not going to be a price that's going to please everybody. I mean, that's just the, that's just the bottom line. Well, there is. It's zero dollars, but they don't want to do that. Let's say they did that, though. Let's say they said, hey, Alpha 2 keys are free. Everyone who wants in can, can join. No problem. Well, then you'd have to refund tens of millions of dollars of the previous purchases. That would make Intrepid insolvent. While we're on the subject, why charge at all for testing? Well, first of all, because Intrepid can. People are so excited for this game that they actually can monetize the first phase of testing without harming the integrity of the game itself. Second, though, it's a barrier to entry for people. Like, you're creating the barrier to entry. So, like, what's the logic in if you have new people coming into the game, the best way to serve them is to add a $120 barrier to entry? How does that make... I Like, I just... I think they really could have, um, yeah, they really could have done a better job with the messaging with this. Testers are gonna get access to tester-specific forums to give feedback. You want people testing your game who are actually interested in your game, not people who wanna bomb the forums to make it into another game, like WoW, for example. The mass testing phase, it will be during the betas. That's when you have hundreds of thousands of people coming in with either a much lower barrier to entry or no barrier to entry. But while the game is in its infancy, it's, its fundamental stages, you don't want the masses giving feedback on systems when they don't like the concept of the game to begin with. For example, PvE servers. You can't have PvE servers in Ashes for several in-game mechanic reasons. I'm not gonna sign up to test Project Ghost because I don't like theme park MMOs. By having a price be part of the alpha, you're excluding people who don't like the foundational concepts of the game. So the barrier to entry is a good thing early in development. Alpha is not beta. And I think one of the reasons why people play MMOs is because they are a equal playing field for people. Like you go into real life and how did you get this job at this investment company? Well, I wake up at five in the morning, I do meditations, I work out, and then I, you know, read news, I have a balanced breakfast, and then I do all that before 7 a.m., and then I go into work. And also, my dad owns the company. Y you know, like, real life is kind of unfucking fair right? A and so, people like being able to play MMOs because MMOs effectively turn the power dynamic of real life upside down where the people that have a lot of time in video games usually don't have a lot of money in real life, generally, right? Because they're not working. And it gives people that are, you know, like young guys, in a lot of cases, let's be honest, the ability to compete on what they perceive to be an even playing field. I agree for the most part. I enjoy the mental rigor of MMOs when I'm competing on a level playing field. People know life these games and provide really good competition. I like how it brings people together from all walks of life. I just don't understand what this has to do with what he was saying about Ashes. Ashes is completely not pay to win. There are zero pay to win elements that have been introduced and won't be. Uh, like if you are a doctor, uh, you know, you're like a resident doctor, you work an, in, in an emergency room, you have a insurmountable disadvantage against a 19 year old stoner that lives with his mom. He will beat you in a video game every single time 
because of the way that your lives are structured, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Wrong again. Burn J has zero death. Kill Jay Burns. From... God, oh, Burns right here. Burns J. Jay Burns. Burns J. Kill him. Right. Right. Jay Burns is back there. Burns J. And so the more that you create an anachronism of effectively the real life unfairness that people are trying to escape with MMOs inside of an MMO, it's antithetical to what people want out of an MMO. He's absolutely right. Pay to win flies in the face of the genre. I could delay paying off my significant student loans to do well in games like Genshin Impact or BDO, but so what? It's a bastardization of the genre and it's not why I play MMOs. But once again, I don't understand how this has anything to do with the price tag of Alpha 2 keys. There is no in-game advantage you're buying. If you're concerned about not being able to afford the Alpha 2 key, but not learning the things from the testing phase, that's what my channel's for going in depth on game systems as we learn about them. If you're concerned about the muscle memory part, I mean, give it a week of playing the game hardcore and you'll likely be better than 90% of the people out there. It's these little kids that, can, that get conditioned into becoming dick eaters because they didn't grow up in the golden age of being able to buy a video game and beat it. Elden Ring used to be the norm. You would buy Legend of Zelda Link to the Past and you would just be able to beat the game and that was it. You would buy Sonic 3, and you could play all the way through Sonic 3 and kill Dr. Robotnik, and it was no big fucking deal. Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3 used to be the norm. Not in terms of quality, but in terms of delivery. I feel like he's projecting here. I played WoW at launch, and I didn't play when the WoW token was introduced because I don't support pay to win. There's a level of cognitive dissonance you need in order to play World of Warcraft for as long as he did and still have these opinions. I know he doesn't play WoW anymore, but that's how he made his channel and got his audience, and he still watches a lot of WoW content. It feels hypocritical for a guy who still supports a game like WoW to mention pay to win and Ashes of Creation in the same sentence. Intrepid does some things I don't like. I really don't like their communication about the persistence of Alpha 2. To say that we are in persistent Alpha 2 starting in, on October 25th is a misnomer. We're not stupid. Don't treat us like we're stupid. I, I, a lot of, I understand there are a lot of smart people at Intrepid, but it is insulting to gamers when you don't take ownership of stuff like that. It's good to criticize Intrepid when they do something wrong. Charging money for the Alpha phase isn't it though. You can argue the price point, you can argue the FOMO, but the game integrity remains intact, which is more than you can say for the MMO Asmongold built his channel off of. Thanks for watching.